In this video, I'll show you how to 3D print your own external hard drive enclosure that is both quiet and cheap. It holds up to 24 three and a half inch hard drives and it can be retrofitted with or without locking wheels. You might remember a previous video we made where I showed off a Tower 900 turned into a Plex server. Eventually, I ended up running out of space for hard drives in that server. Well, to be fair, I just couldn't source any more of the cages that go in the back of the case to add additional hard drives, probably because everybody was buying them. I have a few drives I want to add right now, but I'm kind of stuck unless I want to remove some of the smaller drives that are already installed. This dilemma forced me to look for other options. Disk shelves, servers, external enclosures, you name it, I looked for it. Unfortunately, most of the options I've found are either incredibly loud, fairly expensive, or only allow for somewhere between four to eight drives. Most of the options that are on the cheaper side are still pretty loud and have some high power costs associated with them. I want something that can hold a lot of drives and is on the cheaper side something that has a lot of capacity, more than I need. I don't actually have 24 drives to add right now, and I don't expect I'll ever get there, but if there is enough capacity, I want to be able to remove some of the drives that are in my Tower 900 currently and turn the fans down lower, which will make it a lot quieter. And then I can put all of those drives that I removed in this enclosure. Right now I can't do this because the server is pretty full, so it generates a lot of heat, and if the ambient temperature is too high in my house, then the drives get pretty hot. So without being able to find very great options online, I set out to build something myself. I ended up designing a 3D printable enclosure that can hold 24 hard drives and can be built at home pretty inexpensively. The enclosure itself can be printed in a single print if you have a 3D printer with a 400 by 400 millimeter bed. I have a Creality Ender 3 and a CR10S4. Obviously the CR10S4 has a 400 cubed printable area, so that was the printer I used for this job. As you can see, the design is pretty straightforward. It holds a total of six fans, has a lid that can be printed, and you can fit the lid with a small piece of glass on top. The design accommodates locking wheels on the base, or you can exclude those and make it stationary. Everything can be purchased on Amazon for pretty cheap. All said and done, you can print this whole enclosure with a 08 millimeter nozzle on a CR-10S4 in 20 to 30 hours. The extra parts for the case, like the power supply bracket, the wheels, can be assembled with a bit of super glue. I used Loctite Professional Liquid as it had some pretty good strength characteristics from some of my testing. The assembly of the individual parts is pretty straightforward. Here is a breakdown of how it goes together. The power supply can be mounted on the bottom if you attach the wheels or on the side. You can use a full size ATX power supply or an ITX power supply as there are brackets for both. I ended up going with an ITX power supply. The wheels can be attached on the bottom and the fans just bolt on inside. The overall cooling performance of this case is actually pretty good. It seems to cool the drives better than when they were in my Tower 900 thermal take case. I don't think the six fans are necessary, but I wasn't sure what the airflow characteristics were going to be, so I kind of just overbuilt for cooling. The assembly is pretty easy. Here's a quick clip of me putting one together. I think this makes a pretty decent solution, especially if you already have a server and just want more expandability. If you add the $20 LSI card that I made a video about previously, this makes a pretty reasonably priced solution. And if you have a 3D printer, or if you know someone who has a 3D printer, they could print it for you. The case itself can be printed with simply two spools of filament, coming in at a total cost of $46. The locking wheels, fans, power supply, and glass lid come in at about $146, filament included. Connecting this thing is fairly straightforward, and as I stated in my previous video, you can get one of these LSI 9216E cards off of eBay right now for about 20 bucks. The cables are actually more expensive, coming in at about the same cost as the card. If you get an SFF8088 breakout cable, each cable gives you an additional four drives. So with a single card, you could connect 16 drives if you just use the breakout cables. 
The best part of this solution is if you use the right fans like the Arctic PWM or Noctua 120mm fans, it's relatively quiet, so when all is said and done, you end up with a quiet 24 bay enclosure that has as much expansion as you want in the future, and if you fill it up, you can always just print another one. I've added links in the video description to the Thingiverse site, so you can download all of the STL files yourself and print this enclosure for free. Thank you all for your continued support. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It really encourages me to make more videos.